Just down the road from the Drexel University campus, the Vitus Athletic Complex, sign of our broadcast this afternoon. We're Lack Sports Network, proud to present the CAA Game of the Week. Today, here in the city of brotherly love, the Fairfield Stags set to visit the Drexel Dragons. And we bring you into the booth, everybody. Uh, alongside Steve Petarelli, the former Syracuse All-American, Matt Martucci, so glad that you're with us this afternoon. And, you take a look at these two teams, uh, a pair of programs that are still searching uh, each for their first conference win of the year. Yeah, both teams have struggled here early on this season, but plenty of play left here in the CAA conference. Both need a win here today to get back into that top standings and try to get into that CAA tournament. Take a look at our LAC Sports Network star watch. And for the Fairfield Stags, uh, everything goes from the attack unit, Colin Burke. Yeah, Colin Burke, he's their quarterback, he's their leader. Great with both hands, can do it all, can feed, can create his own opportunities with shooting. So, great player, he's their leader, everything funnels through him. And for Drexel, uh, again, another talented scorer that they have in the Canadian Cole Schaefer. Cole Schaefer is a pure goal scorer with 22 goals on the year. You gotta be careful with him off ball. Not so much with the ball in his stick. When he's off ball though, that's when he's most dangerous. So as a team defense, Fairfield has gotta be aware of, of where he is at all times. Ready to roll for what will be the sixth time in this series history. Drexel coming in, leading the all-time series, three to two. Talented face-off unit led by Will Fox for Fairfield. And Jimmy Coida, just the youngster out of the Bronx. Stalemate out at the X and Fox comes away with it. And the Stags in an offense that averages about eight goals a game. Fairfield has a nice advantage at the face-off X, operating at a much more efficient rate uh, than Drexel. So Drexel's gonna have to be creative at the face-off X, maybe put a pole out, maybe do some different things to try to create some wins. Otherwise, they'll be playing a lot of defense here today against Fairfield. And kind of uh, an interesting conundrum if you look at the Fairfield midfield unit, uh, talking to uh, their head coach and Andy Copeland, said they're kind of gonna Hofstra in, in terms of you know, running their three guys almost all game. Not a whole lot of substitutions coming there. Yeah, you know, obviously uh, maybe not the depth that they've had in the past. So, you know, maybe not having that trust yet in that second or third midfield line. So going to run those first guys uh, to death, as they say, and try to get as much out of that first line uh, unit as they can. Minute in here at Vitus Field. There are holding one teams in terms of conference play and what's a five game schedule. Rodriguez, part of that midfield unit, sends it back behind to Burke, and Rodriguez again, and out of bounds on the backup, stays with the Stags. Fairfield program that a year ago, as we get a look at Jimmy Joe Granito, goaltender more talented than his record. And the bounce shot ends up going wide of Kanastman, and backed up by the Stags. But yeah, Fairfield program, nine and eight a year ago, five straight winning seasons, they've been able to build it up. Back with, plays it from back behind, and sent to the top of the zone. Ford, and Granito ready for it, right off the bat. And Jimmy Joe Granito, guy who, as we were talking about, you and I all fair, a little bit better than his record shows. 11 saves uh, last game against 46,000 shots. Well, well, both of these programs have very good goalies, guys that can really stop the ball, and that's gonna be one of the keys here today. Gonna see a lot of shots, expecting a close game. They could be the difference, both of these goalies. And Tyler Baring is the one of the cage. CAA saves leader, saves a game, save percentage a season ago. Midfielder Rinaldi. 
and nearly turned over out of the reach of Manganello. But pulled back, and Drexel will maintain. Dragon offense, third in the six-team CAA. A little bit over nine goals per contest. Young man they like a lot with the ball, Reed Bowering. And sent wide of bearing and backed up by Robert Frazee, another part of that attack unit. There's Tyler Bearing. Tough year for the senior from Little Silver, New Jersey, but in talking to Andy Copeland, yeah, streaky was the word that, that he used to describe him. But when he gets hot, he can be one of the best in the league. Scrum for the ball in that Fairfield zone. Rinaldi and Co. come away with it. Marshall King, part of that first line midfield. And Bowring sends it back out. Rinaldi again. Mostly veteran defensive unit for Fairfield. Paris Seniors and Eidenshank and Williamson. And out of the stick, Amanganello went out. Bowring will back it up. Glad you're spending your Saturday afternoon with us. Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, producer Brad Kasnett, and our entire fine crew. Trexel being extremely patient with this possession. And they find the back of the net quickly, and guess who? It's our guy Schaefer. 23rd of the year. And again, Drexel was very patient with that entire possession. Really worked for a good look, and it's always a good look when Schaefer winds up with the ball in the stick. You take a look here at the wing dodge, draws the slide, just underhands it right back to Schaefer. A little two-man game off of the wing, so Fairfield's got to be careful of that, got to do a better job, especially when Schaefer's involved as the pick man, but right there just fires it from the outside, so nice possession from Drexel, and they're going to need that, especially if they if they struggle at the X today. Going to need long possessions, and they got to capitalize on their opportunities. A well, fast start in your home turf never hurts either. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, with both these teams, like we said before the game, better than their record shows. Uh, you want to get off to a hot start, get some confidence going, uh, and get some momentum in this game. So it's Schaefer for the 23rd time, assist to Marshall King. And just over four minutes gone by in the first, and Drexel will join the early lead. Dragons have had success here at Vitus Field. Moving in, Manns. Played back to the top of that zone. And the nice face dodge from Manns. They've been waiting for him to kind of break out a guy that they talked about the beginning of the year. And a huge lift from Zach Manns right off the bat. Not even a full minute in between scores. And this is a nice dodge and a nice, almost like a fadeaway shot. You're going to see he's not really having his momentum really going into the shot because the slide was coming at him, so he couldn't really step into it, but does a nice job of finishing that underhanded lefty. Really nice play right there by Manns. Koida and Fox back at the X. Fox doing it at about 52% this year. Coit is still finding his way at just under 38. And look at the effort for Fox to go up the ladder and get that one. And Staggs finally able to get the possession. Andrew Morrow, and the boys' Latin product. Now that they're very high on as a freshman from Clarksville, Maryland. Unsettled situation for Bearing and company. And through traffic and into their offense. Flemming part of the midfield unit with Kanastman and Rodriguez, the three guys that they're going to run until they can't run anymore. 
Played back behind for Max Beckwith. Over to the top of the zone at Fleming. Six minutes gone by, Paradrexel goals and an answer from the Stags, Rodriguez. Now the midfielder, Joe Rodriguez, his seventh of the year. Just catches it, little alley dodge. Just it's enough just to beat his man, get his hands free. A little stop and pop from the outside. Nice shot by Rodriguez. Just under the nine minute mark. Jumps into the double digit point category, Joe Rodriguez. Former CAA All-Rookie from a couple years ago. Poeta had the clean win. He gets a little help from Whalen on the wing. One of those short stick defensive middies, Cam Harris. One of the more aggressive ones they have. Wait for the Cavalry, Manganello in that midfield unit. King on the run, the setup going low, Schaefer and backed up again. Bowering the one to chase it down. Same exact play on Schaefer's first goal, just a little wing dodge, little two man game, playing that pick. You've got to respect him when he pops off that pick. That's the second time he's had a nice look. One went for a goal, one didn't. And back to X, good setup for the Dragons thus far. Almost halfway through this first period. Manganello with the bouncer, bearing ready, got the stick on it. And the backup out of bounds, King chases it down. Both teams offensively look very comfortable. Getting nice long possessions, being very patient, getting some good looks. Really starting to settle in here six on six. These defenses have got to be ready to play long stretches today as both of these teams, again, play very patiently when they're on that six on six offense. Well, here's one for you. As a former defender yourself, how do you settle in on the defensive side? It's communication. You know, you got to be ready to play long possessions. You got to communicate throughout the entire possession. As soon as you stop talking, as soon as you stop communicating, that's when, when goals or good looks happen. So they've got to be alert. They've got to be active, and again, they've got to communicate throughout the entire possession. Williamson got a stick on that last one for Fairfield. Early on, a save each for each of these keepers. Drexel, the goals from Manns and Schaefer. Schaefer defended by Iden Schink. Their best close defender against Drexel's best scorer. Crazy with the roll dodge and the bouncer and scores. Everybody getting involved for the Dragons early on. Third different goal scored by a different player. Just a nice individual play here by Frazee. You're gonna take a look. Rockers him a little bit, just gets top side. If you're the defenseman, you've gotta keep him going towards X there. You can't. Just a nice individual play here by Frazee. You're gonna take a look. Rockers him a little bit, just gets top side. If you're the defenseman, you've gotta keep him going towards X there. You can't let him roll top side uh, and get to his strong hand. And right there, as a defenseman, you almost got to be behind them a step and, again, force him towards X. But right there, Frazier does a nice job. He realizes the defenseman is a little bit out of position. He's able to roll to his left and get his hands free. Well, we've split our four face-offs at the X so far. Fox getting two, Korda getting two. And this time, Nabil Akel. One of three different face-off men that Drexel will use. 
Jamesville kid. And out of bounds goes Fairfield. But backed up by Burke. Preseason player of the year at the conference. Played his high school ball. On a Billy Joel album cover, Cold Spring Harbor. Doesn't get more long than that, right? No, not at all. Rodriguez feeds Fleming. Go bottom of that zone, coming through exits Burke. That's where he likes to operate. And the stalemate for it, kick back into play, the violation by Williamson awards Drexel the possession. Whatever you can get away with, right? Whatever they don't see. Absolutely, when that ball's coming to the midfield line, <laughs> whatever you can do. Frazee plays it out to Manns. Fairfield, from what we're told, primarily man team, as Mann sends this toward Barry. A good opportunity in transition for the Stags. On the run, Antel. Homecoming for the Westchester, Pennsylvania native, lost the ball. And he actually had a guy in front of him. If he could have, was able to get that pass off, could have had some, maybe a four on three or a late five on four there. Just ran into some traffic, but Fairfield's able to come up with it in game possession here anyway. And Burke was able to maintain. Now the midfield unit with Fleming. Drexel so far out shooting the Stags, what's eight to five. Five shots on goal for the Dragons, compared to two for Andy Copeland's Fairfield unit. And Burke changing that, the bouncer and on the board. And the Stags able to cut it to one with their leading scorer. And right here, Burke just shows you his, his ability and his capabilities. Right here, just a little, just a little split dot, not so much a split dot, just a little stutter step there, able to get to his right hand, able to get top side. Just a nice play, and you can see right there, he doesn't need much room. He's got his hands free just a bit, just enough, uh, and he's able to finish it on the run as it's coming from X. Ends up beating Jake Genosa. He's the leader of what's a, a younger Drexel group on D. One of the seniors in a unit that only starts one of them. Bill Akel and Fox again. And Akel ends up with Drexel's third win. And able to maintain the possession, Bowering. You can see both teams playing extremely hard here today. After each ground ball, these 50-50 ground balls, both teams going after it. So you can tell how important this game is to both of these programs. Like we talked about before the game, trying to get back into that CAA discussion uh, and work themselves into a tournament and, and, and get themselves an opportunity to play, to play in the big dance. Yeah, other than one year of your career, not something you're very familiar with, but I think you could, you could sympathize. Going top shelf and out of bounds for Drexel. And backed up by Bowery. But in terms of tournament appearances, three out of four isn't bad. Not at Syracuse, that's pretty bad. <laughs> 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 but no, we, uh, we'll take it, man. Anytime you get a chance to play in the tournament, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity, and it's, uh, it's what you dream of as a kid. Nice run for Rinaldi, top shelf, and finds the back of the net. Every time that Fairfield has had an answer, Drexel comes right back. Joe Rinaldi. Eighth one of the year. And Drexel just get to the mid, get into the middle of the field right there. If you're Fairfield, you gotta force those dodging middies down the alley. You can't give them up the center of the, of the field there. And right there, Rinaldi does a nice job get to the get to the center of that defense. It's tough to slide to that position when you're talking team defense. Uh, he just does a nice job again, working himself to the middle and being able to finish there on the run. Uh, Drexel done a nice job 
taking a look at what they've done shot-wise. Six of their 10 shots on goal. So maintaining the ball when it is at that end of the field, they've been able to get a bunch of opportunities. Looking very comfortable uh, offensively. They, they've had some opportunities where they've dodged from behind. They've used that pick play off of the wing with Schaefer, and then here now the midfield initiating. So they've kind of got Fairfield's defense uh, guessing a little bit. They've got to get in sync Fairfield. It starts with the communication. Uh, they've got to have their slides ready. And again, the simple things. When you're playing a guy up top, you got to force him down the alley. When you're playing a guy from behind, you can't let him go top side. Uh, and right now, Fairfield just not doing the basics, uh, which is allowing Drexel to have some success here offensively. So now the two-goal lead for Brian Volker and the Dragons. Vitus Field, this Vitus Athletic Complex, has been kind to them this year. Two of their three wins have actually come here. Beat what is an always tough Bryant squad coached by Mike Pressler. And uh, what's uh, a more down year for Taylor Ray and the St. Joseph's Hawks down the road. But still two very good home wins for them and then went on the road and were able to win at St. John's as well. As for Fairfield, three wins for the Stags. And Coach Andy Copeland's alma mater in Bucknell. And they needed 13 goals and a one goal victory. UMass Lowell and then NJIT. Marshall King going over some things with the Drexel staff. Dragons and Frazee have jumped out to the two goal lead again. Bielakel again. And Fox. And the ground ball scooped up by the faceoff man, Akel. More opportunity, and Schaefer low, but bearing ready that time. Really nice play by the faceoff guy, Akul, there. Not only to win it, but maintain possession, get through traffic, and then you find the best offensive player in the field, just couldn't finish. And an opportunity and connection for Fairfield. Beck with for the first time this afternoon. Little reverse transition from Fairfield. You see that a lot in lacrosse, the other end makes a big save and they get it up the field quick and Beckworth right there is the beneficiary of finishing that. Good job by Fairfield, recognizing Drexel wasn't in position, little unsettled situation, and he took the ball, put it in his stick, got aggressive and went right to the net. Nice play right there by Beckworth in transition. 11th goal of the year for the freshman from Wanta. Other Islander, those guys can play a little bit, right? There's a lot of those guys flying around Division One lacrosse for sure. But there's also a lot of guys from other areas now too, which is which is great for this game and, and the parity has been unbelievable this year in college lacrosse. This time, different face-off look from Delasho. It's a nice luxury to have. They have two guys that are both over 50%. This time, Delasho couldn't handle the pass and the turnover over to Drexel. Sometimes it's just matchups. I'm gonna talk about the face-off mix. Certain guys just match up better with other guys for whatever reason. And it's on the coaches to kind of work these guys in, find out which matchup works best, and then go with the hot hand. Laundry in between the boxes, by the way. Final two minutes of the opening period of play. Back and forth we go. Drexel jumped out to what was a two-goal lead. And Fairfield has been able to cut it down each time. Stags, though, yet to tie it. Rinaldi looking for another. Nice slide for the Stags. Heidenshake made his way over to cut him off. Frazee hampered by Williamson and had to give it up for Bowering. And turns top left corner for Reed Bowering.
Trexel again using that pick, that two-man game. This time they do it at X. This is a tough place to play a pick at X right here. Doesn't use it. And then watch this shot. Sticks it right in the corner. Beautiful shot by Bowering. Really nice play all the way around by Drexel offensively. Again, setting that pick at X. It's one of the toughest places to play a pick as a defenseman. And Reed Bowering, another one of those British Columbia guys. And a one minute slashing penalty assessed on Delasho, the face off guy. So EMO opportunity coming. Drexel man up unit at about 39% this year, 11 to 28. Got the procedure call on the face off and man down possession for Fairfield. Nice setup from Burke. And you'd like to see that in your attack. Colin Burke, he's your leader. He's your best offensive player. Recognizes that they're a man down. You get that face off win. He immediately runs to the guy with the ball, gains possession. That's exactly who you want the ball, you know, whose stick you want the ball in uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a position like this. And that was Nostman who he found. And now the short stick, Kehi. Wind it down the final eight seconds of the EMO opportunity. The Fairfield kill unit will spend plenty of time and enough time for them to get back to even strength. Theoretically, put yourself in position to just wind this out if you want to get one shot. And maybe time for a rebound and end up the quarter. Nasman do, does just that, bounces it off the top of the pipe. And loose ball push called. And Dragons will finish this out. And Baring will come up with it. That's all she wrote for our opening period of play. South Drexel, five different players accounting for what's five goals. Fancy footwork for Frazee. They're up by two. Back here at the Vitus Athletic Complex, a two goal lead for Drexel. Lack Sports Network's coverage of CAA Lacrosse continues tomorrow. A women's matchup between Elon and Towson. Pre-game show gets things started at 11.30 a.m. Game time set for noon. It's the CAA game of the week, only on Lack Sports Network. Myself and Ali Quillinen will be on that call tomorrow. Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci today. And another face-off win for the Dragons, Ockel. Ockel's had the hot hand for Drexel. Both teams will use multiple guys, but he's been going pretty good right now for, for Drexel, so look for him to continue to take these draws. Uh, unless he starts to struggle, he should be the guy the rest of the way. And interestingly enough, hadn't taken a, a ton of them. I almost wonder if, if something happened with Koida, because we, we only saw him those first couple. Like I said, sometimes it's just matchups. You know, you yeah. throw a bunch of guys out there, see which guy gets the hot hand, and then you, you try to ride him out for the rest of the game, knowing that you have the other guys available if he's tired or, or, or starts to go south a little bit. But right now, he's the guy. Rinaldi sets it up. And back behind the cage for Frazee. Five different players accounting for five Drexel goals. That's the way it's gone today. Bowering has one, Schaefer with one. This is Bowering, Schaefer going low on the bounce shot and backed up Frazee. Here's a good look at Cole Schaefer, comes in sixth all time at Drexel, 106 career goals for him. And he can certainly fill it up, get him in bunches. Bowering the face dodge on the Philly area native Antel. Picked up, King. And 
sent back around. Rinaldi off the roll. Hampered by one of the long poles and Nick Panera. Crazy, way up top. And it's awarded to Fairfield. Tyler Baring, a varsity hockey player, also uh, found out via the little Fairfield video feature. He has surfed since he was three years old. It's good for your balance, right? Yeah. It's got to help. What about you, longboard or shortboard guy? Uh, no boards. No boards. No boards, no skateboards, no boards. And how'd you get your balance? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just figured it out. I guess you just figured it out. No boards, though. Over the top. That was Fleming, and off the rebound, the second chance opportunity, and it's Burke. Check that, Rodriguez, excuse me. Right here, you're gonna see it. Off of that shot, goes high. Rodriguez, I don't even know if he knew where he was. He caught that ball, was spinning, but a nice job. Back to the goal, knew, I guess he didn't know where he was. Didn't look like for a second. Thought maybe he had somebody on his back, but nice job, spins to his right hand, is able to finish it. Second one of the game now for Rodriguez, who got things started. Just under nine minutes left in the first quarter. He had the goal to make it two to one. Okay, I, think he, I think he was a little surprised at how wide open he was. He spun thinking someone was on his back, but he was all alone. He was able to finish. And they get another one quickly. They feed Ford. And just like that, Fairfield has tied this game. Always nice to get one, that winner's out mentality, get one right back and right here. Catch Drexel with the goalie out of the net. A little early transition, unsettled situation, and nice job by Fairfield. It's always nice to get one in transition. Gets the whole bench fired up. You just scored one, now you get one in transition. You can tell momentum starting to swing a little bit to Fairfield. Drexel could definitely win a, a win. You could use a win here to face off X. It's an all New York State attack unit. That's Ford, the freshman from Webster, New York. His 17th of the year. Freshman defender Stabbard up ahead to Jake O'Donnell, part of that second line midfield unit. And Dragons into their set. Between the boxes and Friedman. Whole second midfield unit out there with Mans. I have a feeling that this game is just going to go back and forth for four quarters the way it's been played so far. I think just too much at stake between the two because you know what a loss means. It basically means you know you win out or else. Crazy across the body, bouncer, backed up Bowering. Again, draws the ire of the pole, Panera. O'Donnell angling and right into Baring. Another big save for Tyler Baring. He's a great stopper. He sees the ball extremely well. He's got very quick hands. He's always in position. Had an opportunity to see him play against Rutgers. And if it wasn't for him, that game would have been even worse uh, for Fairfield. So when he gets hot, uh, he's as good as anybody as far as seeing and stopping the ball. And I think that's been one of the things that's been impressive for them today. Uh, some of their earlier losses, a, a lot of fast starts that they gave up, including that Rutgers game. They got down big in a, hur in a hurry. Here they end up with a two-goal deficit. They fight right back. Burke angling his way in and set up on the doorstep and out of bounds for Rodriguez. Check that Fleming. And backed up by the Stags. Beckwith to play it in. Burke, nice send to the front and denied by Granito. That's a really nice save by Granito. 
able to get all the way across the goal on a one-timer and make a stop. That was a really impressive save. And the over and back, what they'll call. And some laundry on the field as well. Just got him on the slash right off that ground ball. Didn't get anything but back, so official was right there. Gonna make that call every time. And Jake Genosa, the one minute personal. Pretty clean game though, we've seen one either way, that's been about it. Yeah, both teams have been really crisp and sharp here today. Not a lot of turnovers um, offensively, making some really nice plays. You know, have had some opportunities that they weren't able to finish on, but both teams playing extremely well and again crisp here today. Burke at the Stags cycle it around. And another big stop, Granito off of the stick of Ford. And run down on the ground ball, Dragons. Checked out of the stick of the long pole, Klingis. There's another Philly area kid playing in his home city. And we'll get the push and again uh, awarded back over to the Dragons. Two minutes into this second period, Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, the former Syracuse All-American, and just some other guy who went to Syracuse. <laughs> Come on, he's a little more credit than that, bro. <laughs> Anytime you're next to somebody with All-American on their tongue, you know, you... Well, you went to Newhouse. I, I, they never let me in that building, so <laughs> you got that all right. I'll get you a visitor's pass, yeah, how's that? Yeah, still don't think they'd let me in. Another nice run for O'Donnell, but got that poke checked right away. Manganello maintaining the possession. Impressive run though for Frazee, bounce shot. And another opportunity in Bowering. Pendulum slays back to the Dragon, second one of the day for the freshman. Take a look again, that pick off of the wing, causing a lot of problems, led to that shot right there, and then Bowering's able to scoop up that ground ball off of the bounce and able to finish as he comes left-handed. But again, Fairfield's gotta do a better job defensively of playing these wing picks. It's created a lot of good opportunities, a lot of good offense for Drexel. So that's something they're gonna have to talk about and maybe adjust here at halftime as we get closer to the, uh, at halftime. I think you may be right. This may be uh, a Batman Joker Dark Knight situation. These two teams destined to do this back and forth all day. Yeah, both, both teams are throwing punches. Stepped out of the box a little too early there, but both teams going back and forth. We talked about the importance of this game. Both seasons are kind of on the line. You know, obviously there'll be more chances down the road, but this is a big one here today, and you can tell these teams are ready to play. Yeah, Mura was the one who ended up coming over the line. And Fairfield again in the Drexel zone. Play it back to X. Nice feed, the setup. Ford off the roll dodge, trying to get the angle and back behind. And Ford was able to get to his left there. He had a great chance, but he was a little reluctant. Wanted to keep it in his right hand. Couldn't create the shot. And gets the chance here. Denied again, Jimmy Joe Granito. Run down by the freshman, Will Stabbard. Couldn't maintain. It's a great name, isn't it, Jimmy Joe Granito? Yeah, it is. You're surprised, though, as this denied by on Nosman shot, Granito again. You're surprised, though, that he's from Connecticut, not Jersey or Long Island. He sounds like, you know, a cousin of mine. Mike, 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 get over! Look away! We'll look at the paperwork maybe after the game. Down low off the bouncer in Beckwith. Burke will keep it at this end of the field. Get 
Hodge for Nostman. And back out for Ford again. Tough angle shut off that time by Whalen. And out of the stick it chased down Fleming, one of those senior middies. Not just the scoreboard for the most part that's even today. We come to six and a half minutes left in the second period. Drexel only plus two in terms of shots. Burke going down in a heap. And pulled away, Genosa. Real good play by Genosa right there. Any defense and watching. Was able to make try to make Burke a one-handed player with two hands and throws his, his check in between his stick, able to get that nice lift and create the turnover. But that's a great play right there by Genosa. Whenever an offensive player has two hands on his stick, you got to try to make him a one-handed player. And that's what he was able to do there on Burke. Yeah, Colin Burke, a uh, guy who's tough to contain that way. And one who will only get better. That's, I think, the scariest thing when you look at this Fairfield attack unit if you're the rest of the CAA. Beckwith's a freshman. Ford's a freshman. Burke's a sophomore. And you're going to graduate uh, a bunch of your middies. But the future looking very bright. Actually, I uh, had talked to Andy Copeland about that yesterday and said, you know, do you ever find yourself daydreaming? And he said, yeah, you know, every now and then. But as a coach, you, you don't really allow yourself to go there. Yeah, well, and take a look just right here at this instant replay. So watch this. He's going to be a two-handed player coming here left-handed. He's going to throw that stick check right in between there, lift it up. And again, just a nice check, finishes it off. But getting back to their offense, you know, you talk about Burke, a sophomore. You know, last year maybe wasn't, obviously had a great year, but maybe going into some games wasn't the focal point. Maybe wasn't getting the number one guy. You know, this year's a little bit different for him. Now he's getting the best defenseman. He's drawing a lot of attention after the season he had. So he's going to get better. He's going to grow up, mature, uh, and, and expect big things from this kid, you know, for the rest of this year and then going on for the next two years of his career. Yeah, the word from... Andy Copeland talking to him yesterday. Cautious optimism was how they approached this year, coming off of what was nine wins a season ago. But brought back 30 of their 40 players, eight of their 10 starters. And just hasn't quite gone the, the way that they'd hoped. So eight to play here in the second. Balance on both sides. Rodriguez and Bowering have each led their respective teams with a pair of goals. There's a look at Andy Copeland in his ninth season. At one point was just a year removed from undergrad when he got the Marist job back in 2004. It said that that really taught him uh, quite a bit. And Brian Volker has really built something here at Drexel in his eighth season. Three of his eight years have been 10 or more wins. Rinaldi, who's already been on the board once today, played by Antel, around it comes Schaefer, denied again, Baring got a stick on it to alter it out of bounds. And again, you've got to be aware of Schaefer off ball for Fairfield. You've got to show him a lot of respect off ball. And if you're the guy guarding him, you almost have to stand next to him. You almost have to take yourself out of the slide package because he's so dangerous off ball. You can't give him that much room. And one of those guys that can just disrupt everything that you plan to do. Well, it's frustrating. You'd rather guard a guy that's a great dodger. You know what you're getting yourself into. It's going to be a long day of playing dodges and running with him. But a guy off ball, you know, that really tests you for the full four quarters. You've got to be aware of him the whole time. And, and again, it kind of takes you out of the team package, which is kind of out of the ordinary. King trying to go top shelf. And off the rebound, the whistle for Manganello. And the push on the Dragons over to the Fairfield Stags. King came up a little lame for Drexel. But that's not a good sign for Marshall King, who had already missed a couple of games earlier this year. Did not play their Villanova game, which is one they could have used him. Ended up blowing a lead and losing by a pair of goals to the Wildcats. Nostman on the run through. Jake Nostman, a 
recruit from all the way in the Seattle, Washington area, Bainbridge Island. He even played a lacrosse in the Pacific Northwest. Flemick, top of the box. And played by Strang. One of their best short sticks. Set up forward, and Granito sees it coming right out of the stick. Another save for Jimmy Joe. Another nice save. Fairfield shooting a lot at his stick, not really making him work. You've got to change the plane of your stick, and you've got to change the places where you put your shots. A lot of them have been stick side high. And yes, he actually had a little bit more time there. He could have really stepped into that one. Nobody was close to him, kind of rushed it. But a nice save by Jimmy Joe. Frazee had a cutter in Mans. Elected to back it out with Friedman, part of that second line midfield. A little two goal run for Fairfield was quelled by Bowery. Drexel's led by as many as two, but back and forth we continue to go. Set up and ends up denied, but kept alive and Bowering with a first half hat trick. No, maybe not. Ends up denied, was in the crease. Great play regardless, obviously not able to keep his feet out of the crease, but that was a great play. We were able to handle that and get it out quick, but just not quick enough. So spoke too soon. Reed Bowring would have liked the hat trick. He was trying. Backed out by Nostman again. Rodriguez is another West Coast guy. Saratoga, California. And the Washington native, Nostman again. Fleming lost it. And the Dragons trying to settle the unsettled situation. Easy shielded by Williamson. One of those two seniors in that Stags defensive unit. They really like Andrew Morrow though. We'll have three more years in a Fairfield uniform. And good to see King back out there for Drexel after coming up lane before. Naldi and King, a little bit of catch as we come toward the final two minutes here of the opening half. This time, Nostman playing a little two-way lacrosse. Rinaldi, good slide from Panera. Manganello, multiple dodges. And they try and go low with Frazee, out of bounds, backed up Rinaldi and the Dragons. So let's take a look at just how close they ended up coming for Bowery. Can okay, able to finish there. I thought it was, oh, it was outside of the net, that's why. I was that's say, what it was. Because he was clean, he was clean the whole way. That's what we call a mom goal, when everybody goes crazy. All the moms in the stands think it's a goal but it's not. <laughs> I wonder what Mr. Panarelli thought about it, uh, patrolling the <laughs> sideline out there. <laughs> he probably thought it was a goal too. Yeah. <laughs> Guess it could be a dad goal. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Everybody I do. Understand? I all do. the moms go crazy, they start yelling the kid's name, and yep. all the dads go, no, it's no, outside honey. that. It's outside no, honey, no. Another look at it here. Everything was clean, just wasn't able to get, wasn't able to get to the front of that net right there, get across just a little bit more to crease his angle, uh, and then wound up landing in the net, but it was close. You and I both know, both married men, that's the point where you look and say, yes, dear, it looked like a goal, but it wasn't. But it wasn't, exactly. Brian Volker of the Dragons seeking what would be their fourth win of the year. First one in CAA play before they get the red hot Hofstra Pride. Had a chance to see Hofstra a few times this year. 
very well balanced, uh, solid everywhere. Uh, great in the goal with Con Cannon. Good at the face off X, offensively very balanced. Uh, Ryan Tierney doing a really nice job as a freshman. Uh, just balanced on both ends of the field. Defensively solid. Uh, Chris slides, play really well together as a unit. So uh, they're going to be a tough out, whoever plays them. You know, obviously, they continue to go this way in the tournament. CAA, uh, just a really, really solid team right now. Yeah, Seth Tierney, of course, part of our LAC Sports Network Final Four coverage last year. I'm sure uh, he would love to not be on that, that crew this year. They've got a shot. This is gonna. This is one of his best teams for sure. Like, like I said, I've been very impressed with watching them. <clears throat> and again, just very balanced. They do everything extremely well. They clear the ball extremely well. Um, so they've got a, they got a good good an opportunity as anybody in, in Division One lacrosse right now. Meanwhile, O'Donnell and second line midfield for Drexel ready to start it up. Shot clock is on as well. Halfway gone right now inside of 15. Doesn't matter for Rinaldi. Second one of the game. Another example of Drexel getting to the middle of the field with their midfield dodging. And again, you've got to force this guy down the side. It's very hard to slide to that position on the field. Rinaldi does a nice job on the run. Able to finish that. Again, take another look here. Gets to the middle. Slides just a little late. And he's able to bury it top right corner. You've got to keep these offensive middies out of the middle of the field. They've had a lot of success sweeping across the top here today. Ninth one of the season for Joe Rinaldi. And actually ends what was over seven minutes for either side without a goal. Bowering had the last one for Drexel. That was at 8.28. Picked up by the pole, Smith. A couple of nice dodges for Kendall Cahey, one of the short sticks. Final 45 seconds, no shot clock just yet. Nosman sending it back. The midi Fleming tried the bouncer, went wide. And chased down and Brian Volker at the Drexel sideline screaming timeout. We, we heard him for sure. <laughs> the officials didn't, but we definitely heard him. I guess we're, uh, we're a little bit closer. Obviously, Coach Volker doesn't want to give them any momentum going into halftime. He's got a nice two-goal lead, team playing extremely well. Could see maybe he changes up the defense here with 30 seconds. They've been playing mostly man with a pretty slide coming from the inside. Possibly throw a zone at him. Uh, might change it up a little bit here on Fairfield. Well, and I, I think you know how valuable in a game that really has been back and forth. We haven't had a three-goal lead on either side. Fairfield hasn't had a lead, period. But just for what kind of momentum you would build going into the break to add another one. Yeah, and Drexel just has, you know, they've had to lead most of the game, haven't been able to extend it. You know, Fairfield staying around. Uh, you don't want to keep teams on, in a game. You don't want to let them hang around uh, and make a late run, you know, late in the fourth quarter and steal a win from you. So wants to protect his two-goal lead going into halftime and then hopefully come out in the second half and start to build on it early in the second half. And for Brian Volker, they'll head to Hofstra. For Fairfield, this is the first of what will be two straight road games. Head to Amherst next week. Game that can also be seen right here on LAC Sports Network. A week from today, one o'clock face off. What does not feel like a spring day here in April. Winds blowing, flags flying, and so right here, Fairfield. They got Drexel's going to lock off Burke with a short stick, and they're going to play five on five. Nice 
Nice dodge for Fleming with eight seconds. Back behind the setup and high for Rodriguez. We'll get one more crack at it with inside of five seconds to go. Burke will play it in. And they're not going to get one off. Out of bounds looking for Fleming. And that's all she wrote for our first half here from Vitus Field. With our score at the half, the Drexel Dragons up seven to five on Fairfield. We'll be back in what is a, a few minutes for the second half. But actually, uh, before we even do that, we'll get a visit from the head coach of the Drexel Dragons, Brian Volker will uh, come by to talk to us. And obviously has to be happy with what his team has been able to put together. Well, Coach, halfway there, halfway uh, in the books in this one, uh, a game that both of these two teams need badly. Your thoughts on uh, your opening two quarters? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of lacrosse left to be played. Um, you know, we got to come out and play with the kind of intensity we played in that first half. we got to tighten up a little bit on the defensive end uh, and keep burying our opportunities on offense. Coach, offensively, you guys are in a great rhythm right now. What, do you, what has been the key, in your opinion? Uh, we're moving the ball really well. We're burying shots. I mean, that's, that's the key. Run by people, do the right thing with the ball, and we're, we're doing that so far. Uh, any uh, message to your guys? Any th I, I don't think you need to motivate them any more than they are, but what do you say in the locker room? Win the second half and we win. There you go. Best of luck. Okay, thanks. Brian Volker, the Drexel Dragons, thinking about a fourth win and the first one in the CAA this year. We'll be back in a few minutes for the second half, but first for an update on everything happening on what's a busy Saturday at College Lacrosse, back to the LSN Broadcast Center in Boston. Bring you back in Vitus Athletic Complex here at Philadelphia, just a few minutes from the Drexel campus. It's a two goal lead for the Dragons. As Drexel uh, on top of Fairfield, seven to five with Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci. And we're now joined by the Fairfield head coach, Andy Copeland. Coach, uh, thoughts on what you ended up seeing? I know you were concerned with Cole Schaefer. He didn't necessarily hurt you too much in the first half, but a lot of other options uh, that did for the Dragons. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't really see 7-5 uh, coming as a halftime score, to be honest with you. I mean, we spotted them five in the first quarter, which frankly is just unacceptable. Um, you know, six out of their seven goals right now were unassisted, and that's something that we talked to our whole week of prep. So some frustrations there. Um, you know, with the offensive end, I think we've been generating, you know, some pretty pretty high-quality shots. I mean, uh, Greedo kind of got, got some, some confidence there at the end of the half, so we obviously got to be very selective here early on in half two. But, uh, but we're in this thing. We just got to kind of keep taking it one play at a time. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of two desperate teams in the CAA, both at 0-1 right now. So uh, kind of what we expected here. Coach, you mentioned your defense. Talk to him about some adjustments. What were some of the main themes and things that you have to change in the second half? Yeah, we got to be willing to slide, especially 16 and 23. They're two big boys. Uh, you know, we got to make them passers. So we, we, we got to force them to kind of move the ball, and we got to be willing to slide and just kind of trust the system in our recoveries. Uh, halfway there, go get them. Thanks, guys. Andy Copeland hoping to maybe put together a late season run. That was our conversation yesterday. Actually spoke, uh, referenced uh, a team that we talked about off air and 
North Carolina and what Joe Bresci and the Tar Heels were able to put together late last season. But said there are uh, about a thousand examples of that every year. Just have to be another one of them. It's about getting hot at the right time. So many, so many talented teams, you know, struggle for so many different reasons. I've, I've been part of some teams that have, that have struggled, and I can go on for hours and tell you what, what went wrong those years. But again, with the way the CAA with these tournaments are set up, you just got to get in. You got to get into your conference tournament, and then you've got a shot. And then once you get there, you got to make the most of that opportunity. If you can be successful there, then you give yourself another opportunity. So plenty of lacrosse left for both of these teams. They're trying to be one of those four coming out of the CAA to get to the semifinals, which we'll have on both the men's and the women's side here on Lack Sports Network. Stags start off the way they wanted to, though, with a face-off win. Rodriguez already with a pair. Our two stars yet to quite get going uh, the way they wanted to. Burke and Schaefer each with one. Well, I think Schaefer's had, a, had an impact. Coach talked about it, the reluctancy to slide. And I think when you have guys that are off ball as talented as Schaefer, you try not to leave your guy and force too many uh, slides and rotations. So I think he's been putting a lot of pressure on this defense by not really doing too much, more or less just being a threat off ball uh, and making the, the team defense be aware of him. Bouncer for Burke goes out of bounds, almost the, like a decoy, has a decoy type of effect. Yeah, I mean, when, again, when you guard a guy that's very talented on the inside and great off ball. It puts everybody on notice, and again, it, it makes you reluctant to slide and leave your guy and force those rotations where guys like that make a living. Nostman going top shelf. Deflected Granito continues to have an impressive day. Seventh save of the day for Jimmy Joe Granito. Burke from X played by Genosa. Off the spin back, recognized, and Granito is there again to shut off Nostman. Great look right there by Burke. Seeing through the defense, throwing that one over the top. Uh, but Jimmy Joe, he's been he's been extremely, you know, he's been in position all day. And again, I talked about in the first half. I think Fairfield, when they've had some opportunities, they've really thrown the ball right at him uh, and allowed him to get into a rhythm uh, and get hot here today. King waiting for the cavalry. Rinaldi is a good person to wait for. He's had a really big game. Already a pair for Joe Rinaldi, Bowring with two. They've combined for what's four of the seven for Drexel. Manganello sends it back, Frazy right out in front and had the cutter in Bowring. But scrambled and picked up, Manganello off the pipe. And chased down by Schaefer. I guess this is one of those situations for Drexel where uh, obviously you, you, know, you want to be proactive, but you also have a two goal lead, so you can be a little more patient. And they do. Right in on the cage. And King, the first time today for Marshall King. Not much of an angle for King here. As we take a look, he's going to beat his man underneath. No slide comes. Recognizes that nobody's really coming to him. Just able to get that off. Took a little bit of a hit there. But where the slide was supposed to come from, from the inside there, he recognized it wasn't coming. And again, not much of an angle. Not much space there to operate, but really nice shot by King. And King, lacrosse, runs in the family there. Brother Jesse, played at Ohio State, and now in the NLL. And Drexel has what is its first three goal lead of the game. There's that separation we were talking about. Now how do the Stags respond? And again, Coach Copeland talked about the reluctancy to slide and right there. You've got a guy who's beat underneath got to come a little quicker uh, and, and help out your teammate who's trying to guard a Dodger. Akul, uh, by the way, continues to have a really good day at the X. And he's handled the ball extremely well today. Hey, hey, hey. 
Mans out there with Friedman. Zach Mans had what was Drexel's second goal of the day. Needed a 2-0 lead. It seems like an eternity ago back in the early first quarter. Mans getting by his man. And down low and top shelf. And there's the hat trick for Bowery. Two goals in 64 seconds for the Dragons. Right here, off that wing dodge again, drawing a lot of attention. Slide came extremely early that time. We've been talking about Fairfield's reluctancy to slide. That time they came way too early, and they left Bowering wide open on the inside. You know, I, I, it's confusing because, again, there's certain times where some of the better Drexel Dodgers have not drawn the slide, and then you get a, a guy like right there, uh, Schaefer, who is really known to be a great Dodger, and you slide to him so early, and you leave a guy wide open. So Fairfield just just not in sync right now defensively with their slides and recoveries. 16th of the year now for Reed Bowery. Fox having to shed a couple and able to get the clean face-off win. Those were 50-50 at the break. If you just joined us, largest lead of the day for Drexel. Back-to-back -back goals for the Dragons in the first five minutes of this one. A pair of goals in 64 seconds. They have made this the four-point lead now. With the former Syracuse All-American, Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, our CAA Game of the Week. Rodriguez and the Stags looking for some sort of response. Played by the two-way Mitty Fabian. Burke, nice double, but shed it and scores. That looks like the CAA player of the year. And that's what you want, that's what you need out of your leader, your best offensive player. Things are starting to go the wrong way and you need him to step up and make a play. And right there he's able to run through this, run through the first defense and the slide comes to a spot where it's really tough to slide there when a guy's coming top side and Burke's able to finish it right-handed. So nice play. Again, that's what you want to see out of your team leader. Step up when you need a goal, and Burke was able to deliver right there. Colin Burke up to what's 20 of them on the year after bursting onto the scene for 46 of his freshman year. Led the CAA in both goals and points. Fox seemed to have it, came out of the stick. Kahey, the short stick, barreling into Colin Mailman. They try to keep it in play. Stag's able to do that. Feet down low, and Granito again, a stick off the pipe. And Jimmy Joe's persistence rewarded there. Dragons will get the ball. You'll take that shot if you're Fairfield, though. Burke with his hands free, time and room, hit the pipe. Good early transition, good early offense. You know, you, you'll take your best player with the ball on the stick with his hands free. Ooh, big time hit out there at midfield. Laundry comes onto the field. Beckwith going down in a heap. And Dylan Beckwith. Hopefully, I, I hope not clutching that right knee. Hopefully, just the just the contact could the, be a contact. The yeah, physicality, yeah. the hit. Yeah, you don't like when they touch knees, but could be uh, could just be a contusion or might have just bang knees. Sometimes you get those deep uh, those deep quad bruises. Had that before. That's that's the worst. And 
and actually just uh, heard from our officiated crew that uh, Beck with uh, ended up being the one to draw the penalty. Now it's uh, it's up on the board. So an offsides call. Insult to injury. And I believe uh, referee uh, actually said to the PA announcer, you may want to hold off uh, announcing that. Come limping off and you take a penalty. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he's all right though. Yeah, getting uh, attention from the Fairfield training staff to the right of our vantage point. Man up opportunity for the Dragons. And they get the cutter and the bouncer and the score. And the first time in a while that we've called Cole Schaefer's name. That was quick. Went right after it. Sometimes you see teams with a man up. They'll move it around a few times, try to get settled right here. Just a little wheel play, carrying guys and throwing it back. And then Schaefer, again, off ball. We've talked about him for much of the day here. He's great off ball. He's able to just sneak himself into that spot. And that's just a really easy finish for a guy like Cole Schaefer. 24th of the year, second of the day for Schaefer. Bioako and Fox again. And chalk up a win for the Dragons. Klingis came out of the pack. Second line midfield unit. Friedman, Manns, O'Donnell. O'Donnell drawing the assignment of the pole, Smith. Manns around the short stick, Cahey. Schaefer calling for that pick, that wing dodge, that wing two-man game that we've talked about. And yeah, gets it from Friedman. Now he draws a short stick, so another thing off of the pick. Able to get an attackman with a short stick on him. And nice angle for Frazee, but that's off the right side of the net. And bearing transition up ahead to Panera. On the run for the Stags. Back to X and Burke. More than halfway gone in the third period. Drexel again, largest lead of the game. It's been 9-5, now 10-6. The made up goal from Schaefer has put them there. Okay, she is the one to back it out. Rodriguez, line, fire, connect! Hat trick today for Joe Rodriguez. His first one since he cut this to a one goal game when it was five to four. And he puts everything into this one, a little crow hop and just stings the corner. Really nice shot, Again, like I said, he put everything he had into that one and just ripped the top left corner. There's the junior Rodriguez, Saratoga, California native. Ian Fleming, the laid back West Coast guys, part of that first line midfield unit. And we'll see if the Stags maybe generate a little momentum. Face off win for Fairfield. Murphy, one of their short sticks. Now Burke and company could settle in a bit. Beckwith, by the way, back up and off the bench after getting attention. It'll be interesting to see if maybe they can get him back in. Watching the trainer talking, I think it was knee to knee contact. Nostman, good slide. Whale and rotated over. This one wide and out. Made 
contained though by Sheehan. Across the zone for Rodriguez. Fleming angling his way and scores. And the late flag comes in as well. Back-to-back -back goals for the Stags. Two of them in a minute and 14 seconds. Technical foul. Hold. Wiped out. Goal's good. That would have been the hold call. Take a look here as Fleming comes around. You're going to see Genosis all the way out on Burke. Right? He's pressing all the way out on Burke. If he was in a little bit further in, he takes away that dodge just by being there and standing there. Would have forced him into a double team. So not sure if that's part of the strategy, trying to push out to Burke. Uh, but if he was in just a little bit tighter, but a little bit better position, that dodge doesn't even happen. Uh, but Fleming does a nice job there, coming around top side, recognizing he had a short stick matchup and able to beat his man as he's falling down. Ended up with kind of the hero goal there on the fall down. Two-point lead for the Dragons. Sparefield on a little two-goal run. And what has been a, a fairly even game. 11 for 20 on face-offs, make it 12 for 21 for the Stags. Fox is starting to get into a rhythm here, and Fairfield needs that. They need to get some momentum here. Look at this. Smith, alley to the cage and scores! about this three goals in what's 88 seconds and the unlikely is the source is there jb smith but you know i like seeing a defenseman wearing number 11 scoring a goal yeah, you, you did that from time to time well a few times but not that many times but a few times but right there nice play recognizing that everybody's pushed out he's able to beat his man nobody's gonna slide to him just a nice play and able, shows you his hands too right there. In tight, you know, defensive are usually better at shooting from the outside, letting it rip with that long pole, but right there shows you he got nice hands and able to finish it in tight. Really nice play by Smith. Yeah, J.B. Smith's first goal of the year. Had not taken a shot all season long up until this point. Well, he's perfect, he's one for one. Again, <laughs> recognizing that he beats his man, there's no slide, they were pushed out, thinking that they had a nice matchup against the pole, maybe create a turnover. But just the opposite, Smith does a nice job, again, of creating some offense and finishing in tight. Well, and in case you folks at home don't believe in momentum, did you see the look on that Fairfield sideline? Yeah, whenever, I said it before, transition, whenever you get a goal in transition, it gets your whole bench fired up, and especially when a D guy scores, for whatever reason, it just excites the whole team. Again, look, see everybody's pushed out, nobody's looking to help at all, and Smith's able to finish it. Everybody was pushed out, Thought they had a nice matchup, a short stick on a pole, maybe create a turnover, get some reverse transition, but Smith was able to protect the stick and again, create some offense and finish it tight. Not just what you thought, the Dragons had separation, three straight for the Stags. Nabil Akul. And Will Fox again. And procedure call on Fox. The only mistake he's made in the second half so far, otherwise he's been pretty good. Back to the first line midfield unit for Drexel, King, Rinaldi, and Manganello. Ball moving around that zone for the Dragons. Meganello. Called Schaefer's name twice on a goal. And again, using that pick. Alley right out in front. Bellring denied by Barrick. Great save by Barrick. Really, really nice save. Take a look here, one-on-one. -on -one. He had to come all the way across the crease on that pass, get back into position, and was able to show you how quick his hands were and make that save. And officiated crew obviously adamant that that ball did not cross where uh, 
some of the Drexel players might have thought it did. Down to our final four minutes in the third period. Shots on goal and shots overall have been pretty much dead even in a game that both of these teams desperately need. Got Shea Farmer short stick, look for Fairfield to slide. There it is. They got the setup, cross the zone. They were looking for King. Bowring already with a hat trick. Good rotation, and up top King, and out of bounds. Back up coming to the Stags, sideline right in front of us, loves that. Love when your goalie shows that hustle, anticipates that ball going wide, just gets out of the net really quick, and able to beat any Drexel player to the end line. Nice play by Barron, real good possession for Barron. Made a huge save, uh, and then gains possession by winning the outline of uh, the, the uh, what word am I looking for here? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> the end line. The end line. There Very you nice go. play, though. Really nice play. Everybody at home knew what you meant, too. Well, obviously in my career, maybe I didn't hustle enough to the end line. I couldn't remember it. <laughs> go, go, go. We'll have to ask Coach Desco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forward backing it out. Top of that zone. Fleming had a really good one before. Nostman, winded fire, that one pinged out. And out of bounds, we get Laundry on the field again. 2.25 left in the third. Thirty-second technical comes on the midfield of Rinaldi. Big spot in this game. One goal game. Obviously, Fairfield's got all the momentum going right now. Trying to get this thing tied up. Have a great chance here with the man up. So mark this down. It's a big spot in this ball game right here. Sub thirty percent man up unit, by the way. Only eight for twenty-eight on the year. Three unanswered for the Stags. Halfway through on the penalty. Looking for the cutter, Burke. Only another eight seconds. Ford with two seconds. Fleming and Ford right into the stick of Granito. And another shot that they put, literally, the shooting at his stick, it seems like today from the outside, give him a lot of credit. He's made the saves, he's been in position, but Fairfield could definitely do a better job of shooting from the outside here today. Schaefer lost the ball. Stags transition the other way. Eidenschick brought it through. just feel it looking at the two sidelines how much this one has changed yeah when, when Drexel was on that run Fairfield very quiet on the bench not much action guys had their heads down all of a sudden they got a goal or two then the defenseman scored and it just after that Fairfield's been rolling let me cut off in the middle of that zone nice defensive play by Muir And Genosa lost the ball, picks up his own ground ball. Transition now for the Dragons. Nice play by Genosa right there. Got the ball moving the other way. Sometimes you can't pick up a ball right away, but if you at least get it going the right direction, good things will happen. Fairfield caught up in a substitution, King wide. And that one, the Stags very lucky because they had late personnel getting onto the field. You're not going to get a much better look than that. It was the long pole Noonan. Who didn't get on until late. Final 10 seconds here of this third period. O'Donnell. Schaefer now. Five seconds. 
across field, Frazee, and right into the stick, bearing. And Fairfield will take this third quarter momentum, what's a three goal run for the Stags. Coming into the fourth, exciting 15 minutes potentially coming on our air as one of these two teams will end up get, getting their first conference win of the season. What was a big first couple quarters for Drexel. Dragons will go to the fourth, up by one. Back at the Vitus Athletic Complex. Next week on, on wait, weekend rather on LSN, we have two more CAA games for you live. First Saturday, April 14th, women's game of the week coverage, William and Mary. Tribe host Delaware, 5 p.m. pregame show, 4.30. Then Sunday the 15th, men's game of the week, where Fairfield goes north to take on UMass at one o'clock, pregame show at 12.30. It's our CAA game of the week, only on LAC Sports Network. See, you're not the only one who Sometimes you look for your words. <laughs> Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci. Everything uh, that this one, uh, we have thought it would be and more. A pair of evenly matched teams that have shown it in basically every statistical category we've had today. Face off shots, you name it. Fairfield trying to take what was third quarter momentum into the fourth, Stags will talk things over. And I mean, if you're looking for messages, I guess on one side, you're in the Fairfield huddle, it's keep doing what you're doing. What are you saying if you're Brian Volker though? Well, I think Drexel um, defensively just got to settle down. I think, you know, some of those, one or two of those goals were in transition. So be smart, trust that you've been playing pretty good six on six here today. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, just get settled down and it comes back to the basics. Again, like we've talked about before, communicate, you know, nice, sharp, crisp slides. Uh, and trust your goalie. He's played re really well today. Try to give up some, try to give us some shots from the outside because he's seen the ball extremely well. So, not too much different here. Again, just settle down, have trust and faith in your defense and in your goalie. Uh, for all the day's lacrosse news and highlights, a reminder to be sure and check out Lacrosse Now from up to the minute breaking news, interviews with the sports top players and coaches. Lacrosse Now, the go-to destination for Lax fans. It's on daily, 5 p.m. and 9 p.m right here on LAC Sports Network. And you can be sure the nine o'clock edition will have some highlights of this one. As the Stags try and work their way back from what was a four goal deficit, Drexel other plans. Win on either side would be the fourth one of the year, the first one here in the CAA this season. Fleming, Angle, and Granito is right there again. And that's one of his better saves of the day. You, you see him snatch it out of the air, go across his face to make that save. Some of the Fairfield shots have been out of stick, but that was a really nice save. Showed how quick his hands are. Well, and they certainly feel that way about him, that he's one of the more underrated goaltenders, not only in the CAA, but in the country. A lot of good goalies in this conference. Two guys we're seeing today, Hofstra's Con Cannon. A lot of good goalies. It's tough for the shooters in the CAH. Tough, tough to get goals in this conference. Now you would have liked that, though, as a defender. It makes you, you feel better. Oh, absolutely. When you got a guy that's playing hot or, or a guy that you have absolute faith and trust in, allows you to take a little bit more risk. Uh, and then when you do have those breakdowns, you know they're going to be able to bail you out a few times. So it's, it's critical to a confidence of a defense. Rinaldi got it to Frazee. Nice job by him to actually keep that from his knees. King going a long way to set up Frazee. Manganello, best chance for him and delivers. That's the first time we've called his name today, and boy, is it a big one to push this to a two goal lead. Take a look here, able to get underneath his defenseman again. These, the defensive midfielders from Fairfield have, have struggled a bit here today, not getting guys down the alley, letting guys step underneath them. Haven't done a really good job of playing those picks off of the wing, getting caught up in those types of situations. So if I'm Drexel, I'm continuing to attack from up top, 
and off of the wing and making this Fairfield short stick D middies play in, in those type of situations as much as I can because they haven't really reacted all that well here today. Eighth one of the year for Manganello, who's a local kid, media Pennsylvania. And played his college lacrosse at Community College of Baltimore City, Essex, two years ago before finding his way to Drexel. Certainly had the ability in high school, though. Two-time All-American. And Corda back at the X. We haven't really seen him all day since the, the first few, but they change it up, and he gets a win. Crazy using the pick from Bowering. And obviously it's, it's not a huge comfort zone, but you're back into a little more of one now with the two gold cushion. They had a nice, you know, they, they did a good job of coming out in the second half, extending that lead, but good credit to Fairfield. Came right back, answered the call, and now it's a two gold game. Rinaldi jump shot, and that's one heck of a way to get a hat trick. Second one of the day on the Drexel side. He and Bowering have combined for half the goals. And again, like I talked about before, keep attacking these short stick D middies from up top. And right there, nice alley dodge slide is a little bit late. Uh, and Rinaldi's able to finish on that alley dodge. But again, if I'm Drexel, you're starting to see a pattern here. I would just keep attacking those short sticks, get them into pick situations, and just keep attacking these guys. They're having a lot of success with that so far. Air Paisan there, Rinaldi. <laughs> a little bit of lift off. That's from a couple of guys whose last names, in fact, end in vowels. Drexel by three, a little now run by the Dragons of two goals after Fairfield put three straight on the board. Procedure call again. And awarded to Drexel. Lined at fire for Ray Jude Whalen, the long pole. And chased down by Barron. And some people might, might not like that shot selection. I do. You got momentum going. It wasn't a bad look, wasn't a bad shot. Obviously, it doesn't work out. Fairfield gets the ball back, but he's able to bury that. You know, defenseman stretching it to a four goal lead in the fourth quarter. Me, I'm okay with him taking that shot. Nostman down an alley. And defended again by Fabian. And backs it out, Rodriguez. Nice roll dodge, and that one hard off of the stick of Granito. Nineteenth shot on goal for Fairfield. Nineteen of their 34. Drexel, eighteen of its 36. The slide from Bureau shuts off Rodriguez. Lemming one on one with Whalen. Across the zone, feeding out in front, and look at the bouncer and the score from Rodriguez, his fourth of the day. And this is a great, great finish right here by Rodriguez. As you take a look here, he's coming across, he's cutting across that crease, back to the goal, underhanded, through the legs of the goalie, nice shot by Rodriguez. That, that was a really impressive finish. That was between the wickets in uh, Croquet. Just had to, to line it up there. It rolled right through. Fourth one of the day for Rodriguez. <laughs> not that either of us could really tell you anything about Croquet. No, definitely not me. Round ball chased down off the face off. And Kehi nearly lost his footing. And again, pay attention to whether a goal like that one ends up energizing this Fairfield sideline again. 
Sheffield's been able to answer, keep this game close, keep them, keep themselves within it, but have been able to get over that hump of taking that lead at any point here today. See if they can carry this momentum, and get this thing tied up, and maybe try to take the lead late. And closest they came was 5-5. That was the 12-31 mark of the second period, but a turnover here. Ended up out of the reach of Ford, and back over to Drexel with Strang. Ganello and Nostman. And now Rinaldi, who has been a huge source of offense today, back out onto the field, that first line midfield. Rinaldi, this is a good matchup on Antel. Manganello, alley to the lane, bouncer just wide. And run down by Schaefer. Crazy and Co. line it up. Rinaldi and again the Westchester, Pennsylvania native Antel. Out of the stick and the chase down on the ground ball, the short stick Murphy. Stags continue to keep themselves right within striking distance. Rodriguez and Nostman. Ford using the pick. And nice to see Beckwith back out there on that first line attack unit. Nice feed down low and Fleming denied. Granito, another big save by Jimmy Joe. Burke and his two goals play it from X. Feeding top of the zone, Nostman. Off the spin back and Granito ends up denying Rodriguez, who was looking at a fifth goal of the day. And transition now for the Dragons. The short stick, Hurley, out in front and the goal! It's Bowering. Talk about reversal of momentum right here. One end, the denial, and Bowering capitalizes at the other. Starts with a big save from Granito, and then you get this transition right here. Nice play, able to split the double team right there from Bowering. And if you're Fairfield, you, you gotta be frustrated at that. That's like, you know, it wasn't a clean break where it was a four on three or a five on four. You, you were basically matched up there. Guy just makes a play, splits a double team. Gotta do a better job of not allowing him to do that but a nice play from Bowering. Bowering and Rodriguez dueling for game honors. Four goals on what's five shots for Reed Bowering. How's that for efficiency? To go along with what's four ground balls. And that's a tough break if you're Fairfield. Get up the goal. About to win a face-off, have a guy step out of the box early. Give the ball back to Drexel here, which is about 7.30 left. And they call the violation. And we see the frustration closest to us, Will Fox, the one of the Fogos. And Fairfield certainly letting his teammates know he's not happy. Inside that Fairfield zone, good setup for King. And evades Bearing. Backed up by Frazee. Frazee drawing the assignment of Logan Williamson. And a turnover for Drexel. 
I mean, I guess it doesn't matter how you cut into this if you're Fairfield, but if you're on that sideline, do you have a, a, a plan for how you would like to do it or, you know, when, at what point maybe you could try and tie it up? Well, I, th I think you've got to recognize a three goal lead, right? Just under seven here. You've got plenty of time. Don't, don't rush your offense. Work for good opportunities. Um, you know, defensively, you don't need to get too aggressive here yet. You know, about on the three minutes of the three goalie, then you might have to start taking some chances. But right now, play your offense. You can have a man up here. So really work for a really good look right now because you know regardless of what happens, you're going to get the ball back with a man up. So be patient. Keep running your offense. Your face-off guy's doing a pretty good job getting you some wins, so you know you're going to have some success there. So be patient. And just keep playing the way you're playing and try to get the first one. Back with trying to outrun Stabbert. Six minute mark of the fourth quarter with the former Syracuse All-American Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, producer Brad Kasnett and our entire fine crew here on our CAA Game of the Week. Burke now would be an excellent time for a hat trick. Off of the roll dodge, drew the double. And loose ball for Muir and now we'll get the penalty. Fairfield really needs one right here. Got a man up, three goal deficit, 535 left. Need to get a goal here, get some momentum back, get your guys feeling good about themselves. And then again, they're doing a good job at the face offense, so put you right in it. Six, offside, 30 seconds, 16 white, offside. Offside call, Will Manganello. As we mentioned, not a great man up unit. Had a couple opportunities today yet to deliver. 0 for 2 for Fairfield. Drexel was hit on 50%, 1 of 2 for the Dragons. Burke from X, the whirl, and got it denied. Good defensive play, but the second chance, and they connect. An unlikely source in Jack Brennan. First time that we've called his name today. Right here, Burke able to get this big ground ball, keep possession, and then Brennan on the inside flashing to him, showing him a stick, being a presence on the inside, and able to finish that. And we said that was a big spot. They needed a goal there. Now they need the face off. Now they got to get this face off, keep this momentum going, and keep the ball on this offensive side. Brennan becomes the second Fairfield Stag today who scores his first goal of the season. J.B. Smith had yet to score one. The long pole got one earlier. Koida couldn't win the faceoff. Fox comes away with it. 15th, one face-off at 28 attempts. And if you're Coach Copeland, if you guys get into any type of trouble, maybe get into a double team, wouldn't it be a bad idea to burn a timeout here depending on the situation? Got to be alert for that because every possession is key right now for Fairfield. Rodriguez has Fleming in the middle of that zone. Now Beckwith with the bouncer right in front, Rodriguez. And Rodriguez going down in a heap after Granito gets the ball. And possession awarded off the push. And the Stags get ready to play it again. Oh, that first line. In on the cage, bouncer from Nostman. Chase down to the backup. Stags will maintain. Burke Beck with Ford, first line attack. Rodriguez, Fleming, and Nostman, first line midfield. Burke back behind, and they get the connection. Rodriguez, who else? He's fifth.
good ball movement here, looking for that skip pass. It was right in front of Drexel from behind, I mean from Rodriguez, right from behind. Nice look from Burke. And a good finish from Rodriguez. And we got ourselves a ball game here, my friend. Now inside four minutes to go, and how about the fact that it is actually the midfield unit today that has accounted for, what is six of these 12? Rodriguez, obviously five of them. But I mean, you heard Andy Copeland, they were kind of having a revolving door there at the position group. And nice to see Rodriguez break out. But Drexel off of the face-off, Dragons. And Cam Harris, one of their short sticks. Away with the possession. Closest Fairfield has been has been 5-5. Drexel has led the whole way, never relinquished. And if you're Drexel right now, nice long possession here. No rush, you gotta work for a great shot. The last thing you wanna do too is turn it up, turn it over up top and, and create some transition. So keep everything, you know, down low. Uh, no sloppy turnovers up top. And again, work for a really good shot here. Sun splash day, O'Donnell across the zone. Granito with the, make it, Rinaldi. Got my uh, Italians wrong there. <laughs> and Baring ended up coming up with the save. Final 2.35. Here from the Vitus Athletic Complex. Maybe we have longer than 235, you never know. Rodriguez denied Granito. And there's Jimmy Joe. I'd keep feeding Rodriguez. I don't, you know, I don't mean to my coach, and I don't know at all about this game, but this game's been pretty good today. He's had the hot hand, you know, create his own shots. I, I'd keep feeding him. Haven't heard from Ford in a while. Mirror all over him. And the freshman Ford unable to shed him. Back to Fleming, good defensive play by Klingis. Send it back out, and that one looked like it hit the net, but pings off the post and out of bounds. Rodriguez again with that rip. Kids feeling it today. I talked about it before, you guys get in trouble with the ball, you gotta call timeout here, need possession. Top shelf, left corner, and out of bounds from Nostman. Off the roll. Nasman down to our final 80 seconds. They got it to Fleming and turned just wide. And Brian Volker screaming for a timeout. Halfway out of the field. He was trying to get one off, of, off the, dead, after the dead ball there. He was trying to get one initially. Refs didn't hear him. And now he had another opportunity there with the ball going out. And, and Fairfield uh, gaining possession on the end line. Finally got that one there. Definitely wants to talk things over here with a minute 16 left. And what a great look they just had, Fairfield. Give credit to Drexel's defender. Just hitting them at the last second, making enough of a play to send that shot high and wide. And what has been back and forth, controlled by Drexel the whole day. Let's get another look. And it was the goalie. Great play. That's a great play. Great heads up play to recognize nobody's on this guy. The last thing he's expected is the goalie to come out and lay a hit on him and did just enough to create, you know, that shot to go wide. That's a really, really smart play. Yeah, Granito has been uh, as good as advertised. He might have been his best play of the day right yeah. there. Save the game. There was the one that the ricocheted off yeah, the pipe. Yeah. The whole Fairfield sideline went crazy. They almost thought it connected. They've had two really good looks here. 
on this last possession so far. Unable to connect. Good timeout, I think, by Coach Volker. Get your guys settled. Go over the matchups, go over uh, some couple key things here. And again, possibly maybe throw a zone at him. Haven't done it all day. Uh, they've been pretty good six on six. But we'll see what they come out with. Down to 76 seconds, winner gets first CAA victory of the year. In the final four games of the conference season. Rodriguez trying to feed Beckwith and lost it. Big ground ball pickup from Muir. That's just a sloppy turnover out of a timeout. Can't have that happen. A simple pass. Gotta connect that one. And now if you're Fairfield, you gotta, you gotta get the double team on. You gotta bring your goalie out and try to create this turnover. Good chance here. And off the hard ride in between the boxes, Panera thought they had the ball. Penalty flag flies. We're down to our last 32 seconds. Schaefer, they can't come up with a strip. Williamson was doing everything he could. Oh, not sure if it's going to matter with the penalty that's coming. O'Donnell with 15 seconds left. Drexel just going to run out the clock, potentially. And the Dragons. Save for a time, led this one from start to finish. And hold on today for their first CAA victory of the year. Drexel ends a two-game skid and will move to four and six on the year. Hit one at one in conference play. Fairfield has started in an 0-2 hole and drops the three and eight. Stags have now dropped what is six of their last seven games. I give a lot of credit to Drexel. Held off Fairfield. They had a couple runs, got close, was able to kill fend them off and come away with this tight one goal win. And also give a lot of credit to Fairfield. Showed a lot of heart, kept coming back every time Drexel extended the lead. They were able to fight back and get close, but Drexel was the winner here today. Now Dragons by one, when we come back, we will talk to some of, uh, of course, the Wittick side. As Drexel snaps what's a two game losing streak, the one goal win here in our CAA Game of the Week on LSN.
Out uh, back at the Vitus Athletic Complex, Drexel gets the one goal win over Fairfield. First CAA victory of the year for the Dragons and ends a two game losing streak. Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, and now Reed Bowering, our Lack Sports Network player of the game. Uh, Reed, number one, congratulations. First off, tell us uh, a little bit about you know, how you were feeling out there. Uh, obviously, things were going pretty well. Four goals on what was five shots to go with six ground balls. You know, what did you think of uh, what you had going today? Um, today, we really kept the ball going around. We didn't uh, have many cause turnovers, which has uh, been bad in the past for us. So we really got rolling, and then we got the momentum, and I think that was the key today. Talking offensively, it looked like you guys were attacking their short sticks a lot from up top off of the wing. Was that kind of part of the strategy going into today? Yeah, we knew we knew that they were going to switch if we set uh, good enough picks, and that played right into our game. How much does this one mean to you, Reed? Just uh, because you you get over the hump here, you pick up your first conference win, and you know you set things up maybe to, to put yourself in position to to make the conference tournament if you keep playing well. Yeah, yeah, that's huge. We need this win really badly. Um, we knew if we went 0-2, it would be a lot tougher. We'd probably have to win every other game. And this is a huge confidence boost going into the next game. Well, that next one, a big one at Hofstra. We wish you the best of luck. Thanks for stopping by. Congratulations. Thank you. So now Reed Bowering of the Drexel Dragons. Big day for him. Uh, ends up moving his goal total to, what, 17 of them on the year. Four goals on what ends up being five shots. And uh, I'm sure his head coach, Brian Volker, very proud, proud of the effort. And... Coach Volker joins us right now. Let's start right there, Coach. Uh, the effort that you got, what did you think of uh, the 60 minutes you end up getting from your guys here? You lead the whole game. Uh, they get close. They tied it at one point, but you never relinquished it. You never uh, let them get completely back into it. Yeah, well, we never make them easy. Uh, it's one of the reasons my hairline's <laughs> like it is. Um, but we'll take the win. The kids have worked really hard, and, and you know, even the last couple of weeks, things didn't go our way. But we've, you know, our effort hasn't been our issue all year, and we kept plugging away and uh, ma made some, uh, you know, silly mistakes there at the end to let those guys get back in it. But you know, got got some stops and got some plays at the end, good enough to win it. So uh, it's a big win for us. What do you say about the character of your team? Every time Fairfield got close, you guys had an answer and were able to hold on. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, look, this is a really good team. I, you know, I know going into this game, I'm sure Andy was saying, you know, th this is a must-win thing, and, and both teams played like it. Uh, you know, everybody's kind of scratching and clawing and doing what they can to get the, the, the win and give Fairfield a lot of credit. They kept plugging away. Uh, but, th you know, thank goodness we made more plays than them and, and were able to get the, w the win. Well, I know for you, uh, the future is right now, these, these next three conference games, but how excited are you after seeing Reed Bowering do what he's done this year and this game about his future? Uh, I mean, look, Reed's an excellent lacrosse player. He's got great IQ. He works really hard. Um, he's one of those guys that is always asking questions and always listening. And, and when you tell him to do something, he does it. Um, and today he had a great game. He's had a really good year for us. We're going to need him to continue to play well. Well, Coach, uh, big one coming up uh, at Hofstra. Wish you the best of luck. I know uh, it's uh, going to be a long week of preparation for that one. Good luck. Yeah, they're playing well right now, so we got our work cut out for us. All right. That's Brian thank Volker. You. Yep, head coach, thank you for stopping by. As uh, Drexel moves to what is four and six, and now one and one in CAA play. It was a good one with Steve Panarelli, Matt Martucci, and you never know. You know, we talked about teams getting on hot runs and, and picking things up and hitting their stride when they need to. Maybe this is Drexel's chance. You, you have a tough one, though, coming up. Yeah, the, the, the big challenge for them over at Hofstra, uh, very good team. I talked about them during the game, very balanced team. But today, played extremely well. Offensively, they looked in rhythm. Guys had a lot of success. Guys were getting open. So good win for them. They fought really hard. Fairfield kept coming back. But give a lot of credit to this Drexel team. Fought really hard, able to come away with a win. Yeah, and uh, the, you mentioned the Stags. Uh, obviously, a, a tough one to swallow for them. They dropped their third straight. They're 0-2 in conference play. Still uh, have a chance, but obviously have to do a lot of things, run the table if they want to make that CAA tournament. Going to have to run the table in, in a very tough conference with, with Hofstra, uh, UMass, and, and Towson sitting at the top. So it's going to be very difficult. Uh, but again, kept fighting, stayed within the game. You know, was down three or four at some times, kept coming back. So showed a lot of character. Young team. Going to learn a lot from this game, I'm sure. Uh, another one next week uh, that they will, in fact, be part of. Fairfield and UMass on the men's side. Our next game of the week, 1 o'clock face-off next Saturday. Now, that will uh, do it for us.